What's up YouTube? Welcome back, my name's Tony and today we're talking about programming realistic sounding drums. So I'm using Superior Drummer 2, but what we're going to be going over today is applicable to any drum programming system that uses MIDI. So to start we're going to add an instance of Superior Drummer. But I find the easiest way to do this in Reaper is to right click on the mix area of the track window over here, select insert virtual instrument on new track, Find Superior Drummer. So by doing it this way, Superior Drummer will automatically set up new takes in your mixer and sends from the Superior Drummer track so that you can route each one of your drums or overheads or cymbals to a separate track on the mixer. Now that being said, you still have to go through the Superior Drummer mixer and route each track individually to those tracks, but at least they're already made on your mixer. So to do that, we go to the mixer window in the mixer window, it starts with everything going to output one and two. So we're gonna keep our kick drum stuff there, and we're gonna move the snare to three, four, snare bottom to three, four as well. Let's keep it simple, snare comp to three, four, hi-hats on five, tom, six, seven, eight, etc., etc. By default, doing it this way sets up 16 tracks for you to route drums to. I like to sum everything down, so all my kick drums are on one track, all my snare drums are on one track, uh, toms are individually, overheads are on a stereo track, and the rooms, all the rooms and ambient tracks are on one track. So I can delete these ones. So from there, we're gonna select the Superior Drummer track, go up to Insert, Insert new MIDI item, it'll automatically insert it in the time selection that I've sent up, and from there we can start programming the MIDI. Alright guys, so I've set up a really quick MIDI drum beat here, and here's how that sounds. So, very basic beat, something super simple, and it sounds like program drums. In order to make these drums sound real, you have to really start thinking like a drummer. And you have to start thinking that a drummer is going to hit with their right hand potentially a little harder than with their left hand. For things like, uh, like drum fills, if they're doing two hits on a drum, you're going to have a right or left, or is it going to be two lefts, is it going to be a paradiddle sort of situation. Each of these shots is going to have a slightly different velocity. Um, and, same, and especially when it comes to the hi-hat track, when you're riding on a hi-hat with one hand, uh, every, every one and three essentially is going to be a lot harder than the two and fours. So the first thing we're going to do is select every other hi-hat hit. Once we've got all those selected, we're going to bring down the velocity to, what's that, 92? Sure, let's try that. Already it starts to sound a little bit more natural just because you're starting to think like a drummer. That right hand isn't going to be exactly the same velocity every single time. So let's take a look here at this double kick drum shot. So I always find when a drummer adds in an extra kick drum shot between the kick on the three and the snare on the four, that the second kick drum shot is generally a little bit softer. So we're going to take this one down to, I don't know, there-ish. Oh, too much. Let's take a look at the second half of this drum beat here, where I've added in a second snare shot for character before that uh, kick drum. A little accent shot like that, generally your drummer wouldn't be giving it his full arm swing. It wouldn't be a 100% velocity shot, so let's take that one down a little bit. There we go. Now how about this fill? We've got two sections here where there's two hits on the same drum. So you can only assume that in a drum fill like this, the drummer's going to be doing right-left. So. Going into a fill, he's probably going to have a lot of gusto. That first shot is going to be uh, definitely a 100% velocity shot. And that second one will be a little bit less. Mm -hmm. 
And the same goes with that tom fill there. Let's bring that down a little bit more. I'm gonna bring that second tom velocity down a little bit. So with the tom roll that we're doing here, it's likely that when we got to that last tom, the drummer would be using his left hand. So we're gonna bring that one down a little bit as well. All right, so we've started thinking like a drummer. Our hi-hats are not all even, our accent snare shots are a little, a little more subtle, and our drum roll's a little bit more human. So let's hear how that sounds now. All right, so that's sounding a little more normal, but it still sounds a little bit robotic. And why is that? Well, because our hard hi-hat shots are all the same velocity and our light hi-hat shots are all the same velocity. Same goes with the kick drum and the snare drum. Everything is still set fairly robotically. So at this point, what I like to do is go through and kind of just randomize the velocities a little bit. The thing to keep in mind while doing this is that generally on the one of every bar, your drummer is going to be giving it a, a fairly solid shot. So you don't want to mess around with the velocities on the one too much. Alright, so we've randomized those hi-hats a little bit. Here's how that sounds. So there's something in here that I'm going to actually switch up, and here's why. So we've got the drummer playing along a normal beat, but we've got the crash on the right. So he's got his hi-hat over here on his left. I would only imagine that for a simple little crash in the middle of the beat, he's going to go to his nearest cymbal, which will also be on his left. I'm going to switch that hit to be the crash on the left-hand side. Now over here at the end of the fill, He's ending his fill on the low tom, which would be over on his right, yet the crash is over on the left. That's a long way for a drummer's arm to go, so let's take that crash and move that to the one on the left. So there you have it. By spending a little bit of time thinking about which hand is playing what and the velocity at which your drummer would be playing this, you can breathe a whole lot of life into an otherwise robotic sounding drum part. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and would like to see more like it, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and leave me a whole bunch of comments down below. Let me know what you think of this. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time.